What's up everybody, this is Chris with the Rotex Rednex. Today I'm going to be showing you how to put this Halo locker in your Can-Am Defender. Let's go. Alright, first things first, let's see if we get the box, sticker, instructions, those are always good. Let's see, uh, open that up in a second. Get all this crap. looks like our half billet case all right here's what you get in the kit obviously you get the front billet uh, case for it right it's a half case this is the $800 version this is the most affordable way to put a locker in your machine you get a wire harness uh, looks like the uh, spacer or a crush ring you get some screws some uh, these basically lock them in place so they can't twist a new breather cap um, some crush washers, the spring for the uh, thing itself, switch, and then a way to attach the solenoid. And then obviously your instructions. So anyway, I guess the next step is to get our other diff right here so that we can put all this in the new diff. So let's go take it out of that. Like always, gotta take the tires off. I'm gonna do this on both sides. Nope. off here. All right, so some stuff we know we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to take these brakes off, we're gonna have to take the axle nuts off, we're gonna have to pop these ball joints, we're gonna have to take this tie rod off, and then we're gonna have to move the shock up out of the way. That will allow this whole thing to open up along with the sway bar. That'll allow this whole thing to open up to pull the diff. The diff's gotta come out on the passenger side. So let's do that. Uh, I believe most of these are 15 mil, but. All right, majority of these belts are all 15s. I did lock tight them all. So now the brakes are free. We'll just kind of for right now. We'll take and slowly get this off of here. There she goes. We'll just set it to the side for right now. Probably gonna have to move that later. Put all your parts in a bin. That way you don't lose them again. Same thing over here. Like I said, almost everything's at 15 mil. I'm going to need a pair of pliers to pull that cotter pin out. Let's do that. There's that. Throw it in the bin. Not on the bottom. Not on the top. There's that. Give her a tap up. That's free. If I can, can so I remember where that goes through. Take these, reshoot them, and these you can just move up out of the way. All right, now we're gonna open this up, take this dude off. Same thing. Get back up, take, pull, try. Pry. One more time. Pry. That might not be saveable. All right. I'm going to take this off. Let's see what size that is. All right. Take your 30 mil. Put it on there and then. Unga dunga, baby. That's off. All right. So there's that. Hub should be able to come off. Boom. Look at that. That's why we take care of our shit. Everything comes apart easy. Set those to the side. Try not to mix them up. They're gonna have to go back where they go. They came off. All right, 15 mil on this, I believe. So we'll take that one off first. Nut, bolt, push it through. Probably gotta fight it a little bit. And there she goes. Make her life easier. Let's undo this cotter pin right here, if you guys can see it. Should just be able to grab a hold of that. Try not to hit your axle boot. Pop it off. Saveable. Now we're going to have to get in here. This will be a different story. We're going to have to loosen that up. So, take and loosen our shock. 
15 mil. Came off easy. I just had those out. If you guys ain't seen those, that video, that one's pretty slick. All right, so there's that. Now we should be able to take this out. I think that we can hold this up. We ain't gonna actually take all this out, so. Hold this up. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll grab bungee to zip tie this up to give me a max amount of room to work. I'm gonna take sway bar off. Oop, don't lose that. All right, don't lose that nut either. Getting my head of myself taking parts off. I'm sure you guys have done that. Let's go through shock. It's just easier to remember. Put them right back where they go. All right, so now with that up, I gotta try and get that off. Probably grab a hammer. There it is. So I got that out. All right, now at this point, I might be able to finagle this, I might not be able to. There it goes. Sweet. So there's that axle. Oop, I kind of want to keep this from doing things stupid. There we go. Maybe we'll hang it up there. And then we can probably hang this up. We don't even have to undo this one, so if you don't have to, then don't worry about it. So we'll just get something to tie this to up here too. And then we'll just pull this axle out. I gotta loosen that other one before we get weird with this thing. All right, now that before we go any further, let's go get to the same spot on the other side so we can get the sway bar turned up out of the way to pull these axles out. All right, the only additional step I'm gonna do on this side is I'm gonna take this shock all the way out. There she is, because this is the side that we're gonna use to get the defender out. So take that, set it to the side with the bolt and the nut so we don't lose it. And we're almost there. So by now, yeah, nice. There's that. And I'm thinking that we should be able to slide this up out of the way, just like that. And now we are kind of at a spot where we can get this axle out fix this little thing and see where we go now. all right we're back sorry about that um, I lost power so I lost power had to rebuild a generator I uh, got that going and as soon as it was done the power came back on so oh well anyway only thing you guys missed we we're talking about removing the shock right and then all I did was once I got these arms up I gave the axles a tug straight out the straighter the better you can do it and they'll pop right out of both sides. Sometimes this step can give you be a real pain in the ass. Hopefully not the case for y'all. Um, so yeah, go ahead, give them a nice little tug straight outward and they should pop out. There's just a little C-clip. If you guys can see, there's a little C-clip right here. And that's the only thing that really holds the axle in place. So you just gotta get that to just squeeze enough to pop it out. And that's really all that's to it. But these look good. That looks good. Now, um, now that we're out, we got to get this diff out of this side. So it looks like that's going to be a 13 millimeter bolt right down there. And uh, we'll undo the bottom and see if we can get this thing out. This is probably really hard for you guys to see, and I apologize if it is. But we're just taking that 13 millimeter nut out. I'm not really sure if it's spinning yet. Let me try to get this on the bottom. Oh, yeah, dude, she's coming right out. Sweet. There it goes. That bolt's out. All right, now I gotta remove the bolts to the actual diff themselves. I'm not too hip on this because there's nothing under else under here. So you can do this without wrecking yourself. One. Two. Three. Last one. Four. All right, those are out. Sorry if that was really crooked for you guys. So I feel like you guys couldn't see that good. We'll see how the GoPro footage turns out, but just in case you couldn't, 
There's one, two, three, and then four 15 millimeter bolts that look just like this. And those come out, and now this whole diff should be mobile in there. Oh yeah, she's moving. All right, let's get it out. All right, one thing we almost forgot to do, but I remember just before we got it out, let's drain this fluid real quick. You don't need any more headaches when you're trying to take this thing out. Ooh, and that looks good. Yep, minty fresh, boys. I just changed it not that long ago. But, yep, looks good. Take your drain plug out. When it's done, put it back in. That way we don't dump it all over the place and we're finagling it, trying to get it out. You know what I'm saying? All right, be back with y'all in a second. All right. The diff is out, but the camera wasn't on, so go figure. Um, the only difference I had to do after I got the spline out was I chipped this off with a, uh, a chisel. Just gives you a little bit of extra room. Turn the diff sideways and pull it straight out through the passenger side. There it is sitting right there. It wasn't hard at all. Um, one little tip is that when you go to take this off, it'll really help to throw some penetrating oil, especially if you ride water a lot. Just spray this shaft right here. Give it a few minutes and then take it off. But yeah, I totally botched pressing the record button. So super simple though, just pop that rivet out with a chisel. It allows us to flex and then the diff comes straight out from this side. All right, let's get into the diff. All right, we got the diff on the workbench. Go ahead and open it up. Try not to lose anything. Now you got screws out. Try and work this thing loose. Sometimes you can kind of pain in the butt. Once you get it turned to where there's a little bit on it, that way you're on that lip. Take a big screwdriver. And see what you can do to get it to press up. Uh, before you go any step further, you got this beveled washer. This is important. You're going to need this again. It goes right on that ring gear. Uh, another thing we got to do is we got to take out this o ring. Try not to mess it up. It's best if you have like a scribe. You take it, you work it out. You're going to save this. This is going to end up going on the new clip. This is no longer needed. So we can set that over here. Out of the way. This will go on the new one. Not sure if you guys can see that or not, but there she goes. Pops right back into place right there. All right, now, now you're going to pull out the internals of the Visco. That's a pain in the ass. here might have a little bit of fluid residual fluid left over now it's a good time to come in here and inspect all your teeth which those are actually looking pretty good so no crazy wear no nothing obviously this is the side of the case that we're gonna oh, we got some rubbing right there find out what that's all about that Yep. Uh, anyway, we're going to use this again, so let's put this to the side. All right, we're back. Cleaned up. You're going to take both these Allen head screws out, set them to the side. <clears throat> now we got to take these big ones off. Let's see if this guy will even do it. Something a little more ass. Alright. On the big girl. Alright. 
expose ourselves to our clutch pack. These are all our little gears for what happens when we when the visco engages and disengages. These are those clutch packs that everyone's like always hears that crazy sound and they're all like oh no you know I think my diff screwed. It's not it's just this clutch pack working. Uh, let me clean this up real quick. <laughs> all right now we need to take this visco gear out grab yourself a flathead easily pry up on this. It should come loose. That's your visco fluid. Nasty stuff. We need this so make sure we save this little gear. Alright, now that that's there, you don't really need this part anymore. This is going to end up just being trash. I don't really see any use of keeping it. Um, maybe the snap ring. But Besides that, you don't really need it, so we'll set that to the side so you don't get confused. In this piece here, we're going to have to get rid of the uh, Visco clutches, the spring washer, your first washer, all your set of gears. None of this is needed anymore. All right, that is the side to the side. Those get set to the side. Make sure they're all out of there. So these are all of our visco gears we're getting rid of those all right now once all of this is out of here double check should kind of look like this um, you're left with what's left over of your visco lock gear all right very smooth operating um, this one is relatively new so you shouldn't have any problem with it all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this snap ring out right here and we're going to move the internals of this so that we can reshim it for the new diff. Let me grab my pliers. All right, now using a pair of these handy dandy pliers, you're going to take and you're going to remove this snap ring so we can slide that bevel gear out. So, see if I can do this with you guys watching right here without sending this thing to the moon. All right, don't lose that. You're going to need it to reinstall. Now, as this thing comes out of here, you're going to end up sliding this shim that sits right there. Now, if you do this carefully, it won't all fall apart on you. You're going to take that shim out, and you're going to replace it with the one in the kit. You do the same on both sides. Let me pull it out before I lose all this stuff and jack all this stuff up. We have our new shims right here. We've already done one. So we're going to put that back in there. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side. So this side's already starting to come out. Take that. Once you get it all lined up, just like that. Double check it to make sure it's all working the way it's supposed to. And then we're going to reinstall our snap ring. Make sure that it is fully in there and fully recessed. That's one piece you do not want coming out of there. We'll check it for play, trying to shoot it back and forth. Check to make sure everything's moving the way it's supposed to. That means it's shimmed correctly. Moving on. We're about to reassemble. All right, we're about ready to start putting this back together. Like I said, double check these things. 
Make sure you got good movement on this. Uh, now we're going to take start putting the new pieces they gave us back together, right? You got this piece that looks like this. You're going to flip that over. Then you're going to add the big washer, the one that comes in, the biggest, thickest one they give you. That drops in there like that. The Visco gear that we saved, that just drops in. Then you've got their brand new prescribed locking gear. You're going to want to line that up nice. Try, to, try not to fight anything. This helps as you kind of line it up as you go. You can see the four locker bolts as you go in there. Then you've got this guy. This is our new piece, right? What you're going to do is you see your your uh, three holes. Three holes. You're going to want to try and line that up as much as possible. Obviously, sometimes it just isn't going to go together right. It should kind of drop down into place. Line it up just like that. And if you see, all our holes are lined up. Now this is where it can be kind of a pain in the butt. Um, obviously this, try to wash that off real quick. This is our ring gear. Try to clean this up. This is going to try and slide over. And there it goes. Alright, now we're going to end up using these and gently thread it in just to hold it so that we don't drop it. Those are just in there temporarily because these need to be red lock tight and we also need to get these uh, special holders in here that stop these things from turning, if that makes sense. These things will get tightened down and then these things will go in here and lock that into place like that. That way these bolts can't loosen anymore because that's been a big problem in the past is that these back out. So once you get these down and tight with your red Loctite, this will go over the top to stop it from turning. Does that make sense? It should make sense. So let me go ahead and get everything I need to tighten these down and then we will also uh, blue Loctite these and get our red Loctite to lock those down. All right, we're back. Got my lock tight. Uh, these are Allen head screws. You know how much Allen heads like to burn out. So you don't want to strip them. So I just take a little bit of blue lock tight on those. These are just alignment bolts anyway. But I don't like to not put anything at all. I don't think that's very good. Good jazz. These don't get even torqued by instruction. So I'll just take them. Those two. All right, now with this one, we're going to use these little black bolts that look like this. And these are all going to get red lock tight and they're going in all these different spots. Right? And then after they get torqued to 33 foot pounds, use a foot pound torque wrench. And then afterwards, we're going to get these uh, little triangle tent tabs and they're going to go on it like that. And what that's going to do is that's going to hold. The bolts in place when they're down there like this stop them turning out one of the big problems with these halo lockers is that the bolts were coming loose for so long they used to have snap ring washers in it that uh, would supposedly hold them in place but they kept failing so this is halo's new way of stopping them from backing out so we will red lock tight them and then we will also um, torque them to 33 and then use these to hold them in place and then put this on uh, here and it holds all those little snap rings in place to stop anything from moving. So I'm going to do that real quick. Uh, it takes two hands, so I'll catch up with you guys when it's done. Very simple. Bolt, Loctite, hole, 33 foot pounds, and then I'll come back over here and show you guys how to do this. All right, now we're back. Uh, like I said, super simple. Loctite, torque to 33 foot pounds. 
uh, in a star pattern, same way you do a tire one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that sort of thing. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to place all of these keys, right? And if it doesn't fit like they said, I'll see. If you get it to go, go in, you're good. But if it doesn't work, you just got to flip them over. All right, so now that should stop all those bolts from ever backing out. So between the Loctite, the lock tabs, the torque, we should be good. Now we got to get this on here to snap that into place. See if we can kind of figure it out. These are kind of finicky. You got to get them in and you got to kind of work them around um, as you go. All right, so now probably wouldn't hurt to take a screwdriver and on the side of these nuts, just to make sure they're in all the way, all right? Because that's your protection. These things are designed now to, yeah, they might wiggle inside the diff a little bit, but there's really no way that they can move or loosen up. All right, moving on. All right, we are reaching the end of this. Uh, we've already done this, this is done. Take the case, clean it out if you got any yucca junk in there. Kind of glad I did this when I did. I had some scraping going on, probably because it wasn't shimmed right. But either way, this is nice and smooth. Those bearings don't look too bad. We're going to take this guy and we're going to test fit this. Watch your fingers, they bite. There it goes. All right, now we're going to check this for make sure everything's going smooth like it's supposed to. Take all my finger pressings out of there. Let me come closer to you guys so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so now at this point, we've built. The locker, we're all tied up and we're good to go. Um, now we're going to take this guy. This is our actual um, locking mechanism. This is what shoots down and locks it up. This is uh, turns it in from your three wheel drive to your no shit um, four wheel drive locker. Before you do that, it's hard to get the shift fork in, so you're going to take your shift fork. Um, you're going to go with this. This is the actual actuator that brings it up and down. Uh, a little blue Loctite probably wouldn't hurt on this. Probably not necessary, but we're going to do it anyway because you just don't like things coming apart on a diff. All right, so a little blue Loctite. You're going to drop that through its hole. There goes that. We're going to find our shift fork here. We're going to tighten this Allen key up. It is a long screw. Then you're going to take it and give it a good snug. Alright, now this guy is going to slide into this groove. Like so, see? And then you're going to drop it into those four holes. Like that. Alright, now you're going to take your supplied washer. That we had saved from the beginning that drops in there like that try to clean everything as good as you can because hopefully we're not taking it back off for this this can be kind of a pain in the butt um, lube it up put a little lube on there and now this is where it kind of turns into a pain in the ass what you're going to end up doing is you've got to line this up with the shaft end up and get your o-ring in there which probably wouldn't hurt to put a little bit more um, lube on this o-ring. Never hurts to lube up the o-ring. 
figure out where it's got to line up at. Probably right about there. I lost audio here for a second. All you're doing is installing the O-ring and then the remaining spring, the washer, and then the sur clip to lock that thing in. Sorry I lost you guys there for a second. All right, at this point, uh, all we gotta do is thread this on, then put that cap on. We've already tightened these down. I just put a little blue Loctite on those. So you're gonna take and thread this in here. I don't really think that you need any Loctite on this. This is just for it to breathe. So, grab a wrench. Let's see what we got on that. What size are you? Nope. Probably a metric 10 mil, probably. Oh, yeah, of course it is. So, you're going to go ahead and thread this thing in all nice. That's kind of cool. It flexes like that. Good deal. That makes it easy. All right, like I said, that's just to let uh, air in anyway. Now, you gotta put this bad Larry back on. All right. All right. There it is. We got our vent line, our new halo diff. And now we get to do the fun project of putting it all back together. But there it is. Very smooth. You can hear the locker in there. Works pretty good. All right, now I said, like I said, um, get this back in the machine, and then we'll install this guy just like this after it's all said and done um, because we don't want those problems. Don't forget there's an O-ring that sits right here also, so you want to lube that up when uh, you go put it in. That way it slides in nice and easy for you. All right, now that we've got our diff back in, we're going to go ahead and install this actuator. Obviously, you just kind of line your holes up. Don't want it sitting there because it'll fall right out by the looks. I wouldn't over torque these if I was you guys. It's just plastic, so just get them snug. There's the actuator. Hopefully you guys can see that. All right, actuator is in. This is where our harness will connect. And then we still gotta get this diff drain line on. Realistically, that probably would've been way easier before I did the actuator. All right, there's that and there's that. I think that now we should have enough room to not only put our wire harness in, but to put our axles back in also. I don't think I want to do the wire harness until all this stuff's back in to make sure I'm routing it the right way. So go ahead, there's nothing special about this. We're going to install the axle, we're going to put everything, all the suspension back together, everything kind of but the tires, and then we're going to hook that. Uh, solenoid up and we're gonna see how it does with the wiring so I'll meet you guys back here when all the suspensions back together you should know how to put it back together because you took it apart all right we're back the next morning um, got a little too late so I've decided to finish up today all we got left is this wire harness um, just to show you where we're at right now we have put all the suspension back together 
everything, but the um, left shock is out. I'll show you why in just a second, because now what we gotta do is we gotta route this wire harness. So to get ready for all this, uh, take your shock out and then take your console out. That's super simple if you've never done that. Um, it's just, uh, you pull on the bottom here, tabs will pull up and then you just disconnect all these wires. Um, that goes pretty easy. Now we're gonna route all the wiring into the new switch for the four wheel drive locker. Um, to do so, how we're gonna do it is we're gonna, we gotta get to right here and we gotta get through the firewall. The easiest way to do it on limiteds in this area is if you see right here, this is our shifter cable hole right here. We're gonna pop this little button head out, pull this panel off and we'll be able to work our wires through. All right, like we just talked about coming here, a little pop head rivet right here, plastic, pop that out and comes right out. This is where your housing for your master brake cylinder and all that. So we'll take this, set it to the side. And now you guys should be able to see all the room we have to work in here with wires, right? Our wires are gonna go through here, which house this guy. Oops, sorry guys. That looks just like this, right? And our wires can all go through here. Our shift cable can all go through here and then we can reseal the cab up. So this is probably the best place to put it. So let me start we're out in this wire harness and I'll make sure everything goes good. All right, so you guys can see now that we've connected the harness. We routed it up right behind this, this frame mount. It runs along inside the frame and then it's also gonna shoot right through there where our shift linker goes. And then it, all, then it comes up and goes over the frame rail right there. When it goes over the frame rail there, it'll pop out back there on the back side all that i know it's really hard to see i'm sorry but then you'll pull the whole harness out and you're going to feed the harness behind all these and then you can mount your switch anywhere you want so now we have our harness into the cab uh, we're going to go ahead and hook up ground power and then our switch all right so now this is our main console right this is where all of our switches come from we got to figure out where we want to put our switch. This is where my mic goes. So I'm going to put mine right about here. So super simple, right? You just pop these things out. Just a blank off. Now we're going to take our new one. Make sure that's up. And then that'll snap into place. Right? And now this is amber too. I swapped the uh, lens out. Normally it comes with a blue one. But uh, so there's that. Now we just got to hook up power, ground, and then hook in our switch. Very smart to mention this is wire color, right? Not lead color. So it's blue, green, black, and it tells you exactly uh, which one to put wire color. Make sure it's the wire color. States that a lot in the directions. So this is ready to go. Let's hook up our power and our ground. Let me show you how we're going to do that real quick. It's kind of dark in here. Hopefully you guys can see this, but I don't want to turn key power on. Ugh. All right. So now, looking at this, right, we got our two leads, our black and our ground. We're gonna, all we're gonna do is we're gonna hook those up to those. You're gonna hit your red wire to here and your black wire to here. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we're gonna get ready to hook up our switch. All right, just finished up the wiring. Just kinda wanted to give you guys a quick showdown of how this all works, all right, so. We put this cluster back in. Our switch is where we said it was going to be. Um, everything's rehooked up. We went red to red and then black to black. And then obviously we did the blue, green, black on our switch. So now when you, let me reinstall this real quick. Super simple, right? Or it should snap back in place. And that snaps back in place. All right, so now in theory, we should have reverse lock. And then now we should be able to lock it. Boom, she's locked. And now this should take a couple revolutions to kick in. And that's it, locked, solid. Not going anywhere. If we turn the locker off and then Turn this off, we should be free spinning again. Butter. 
All right, and just to show you how we wrapped up this install, we put our cover back on. I did cut a little bit out of this grommet so that all those wires fit in there nice. And then it goes down and goes right into this actuator. I'm just gonna zip tie it in a few spots and then we're gonna put the tires back on it. But in a nutshell, we have a fully locking halo locker. Nice. Now, one thing I will say is you gotta have four wheel drive on to make that work, right? Then you all, your diff lock should always be on when you're trail riding anyways. And then at the same time, remember that as that thing spins, right? It's gotta have those four prongs have to lock into those holes. So it's not gonna be instant, but you won't notice it on the trail. You might notice it when you're sitting here playing in your garage and you're like, oh, it's not, didn't lock up right away. One, literally half a revolution, it'll be locked up way better than Visco. And then you don't have to wait for it to spin. On the trail, it's almost instantaneous, but anyway, there she is all locked in. Now we just gotta fill it up with fluid and then uh, put our tires back on, our shock back in, and I'll show you when we're at that point. All right, one of the last tips is to grab your 7590 gear oil. It takes the same gear oil as the front. Always did, just uh, like it says right here. Um, it will take a little bit more because you got rid of all the clutches and packings and all that stuff. So um, same exact gear oil, 75W90 um, brand doesn't really matter as long as it's got the right properties. And then also just be aware it's gonna take a little more than usual. So you fill it up, kind of wait for it to come out and then uh, that's it. So let's do that. Go ahead and just pump her up till she's full, boys. All right, so just to show you guys, right, you can spin these independently all day. Come in here, lock them up. Come out here, a little bit of a rotation, and then boom, look. All locked up. So now all these tires will turn at the exact same time when that locker is engaged, but it still gives you that available opportunity to use the three-wheel drive, basically posi traction or whatever you want to call it. but. That's it, that's a wrap. I'm gonna get it back down off jacks. Then I'm gonna put in, put the tires on. We're going to Carolina Adventure World this weekend. Should be a hell of a trip. I'm gonna do a video on the new shocks, the locker. So you guys are definitely gonna to wanna to catch that. We're doing a full on review of it. But anyway, really hope this helped you guys. We will catch you in the next one. Hit us up.